Hello, James. Hi. How are you doing? Pretty good. Okay, my name is Dr. Sarah. Okay. Welcome to the office. Thank we you. specialize in homeopathic medicine. Okay. You're here for a sleep study today, is that correct? Yep, that's correct. Okay, so tell me a little bit about what's going on. You're having issues um, sleeping? Yes, yeah, like I'm not sleeping as well as I should be. Okay. Um, and my quality of sleep is not very good. It's like off and on. So issues with quantity and quality. Okay. Yep. I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions so we can get a better idea of what exactly we need to do for you today, okay? okay thank you. So you said you're having trouble sleeping. How long would you say you've had disrupted sleep, or is this an ongoing issue for you? It's been ongoing. I would say pretty bad in the last two or three months. Okay. It's been a pretty long time. Do you have any issues with sleep apnea? Do you snore when you sleep? I do snore. When you get like a full night's rest, if for you that's six, seven, eight hours, however long, would you say that you wake up feeling rested or do you still feel kind of groggy, tired? Mostly groggy still. So we'll go a little further into that. The grogginess could be just because of the lack of sleep, but also if you're having issues with sleep apnea, you could not be getting enough oxygen to the brain, okay. which has you waking up feeling tired and not as rested as you typically should be. How many hours on average would you say you sleep a night? Um, five, maybe okay. six. Five to six. How long does it take you to fall asleep? About 30 minutes. Okay, so not too bad, but longer than maybe what would be considered normal. Right. Do you usually wake up to use the restroom? Yes, I do. How many times would you say? Once, if not twice. Okay. And... Before you go to bed within the last two hours, do you drink any liquids, water, juice? I do. I take water to bed with me, actually. And do you find that you wake up thirsty or like your mouth is dry? Absolutely. Okay. Could also be related to the snoring when you right. sleep with your mouth open. Your mouth tends to be drier. Okay. Do you sleep with like a fan or the air conditioner and window open? Um, usually fan and air conditioner. Okay. So you like it kind of cold? Yes. Okay, that's actually a good thing. All right, and what about dreams? Do you have any bad dreams, good dreams? Do you remember your mm. dreams at all? I don't have too many bad dreams. I probably remember my dreams once a week, if that. Okay, and do you feel like you dream every night or no? No. Do you take any sleep supplements? Melatonin, no. which hazelnut nothing. Nothing. Okay. Would you be open to it? Sure. And no prescription sleep medication? No. Very good. What is your usual bedtime? Um, 1 a.m. Okay. And does that work for you? It mostly works, yes. Okay. What time do you usually wake up in the morning? Um, about 9 a.m. Okay. And... Do you have a bedtime routine? No, I don't. No? Okay. So that's something that we might want to consider implementing. Okay. It's basically just a way to kind of train or trick your brain into saying, hey, it's time to go to sleep, we're winding down, we're getting tired, we do it a lot with children, and as adults we kind of think that we phase out of it, but really it is important to have a routine and a set schedule so that okay. your body knows when it's time to start cooling down for bed. Okay. And the nights that you maybe get less sleep, is the problem more so that you're waking up a lot throughout the night or that you're just not getting enough sleep overall? I think both of that. Okay. So you're waking up multiple times and you're also maybe not sleeping as long as you would want. Absolutely. Okay. So your issue seemed to be more once you fall asleep right. and staying asleep and not so much actually getting there. Exactly. Interesting. Okay, so I want to get started by just doing a short neurological examination. This is just going to help me get a baseline of your senses. I want to make sure your pupils are functioning properly because that actually can affect your sleep. Right. So I'm just going to start off by having you follow my pen line. All right. Thank you 
your head still. Let me know if you have any pain as we do this. There shouldn't be any discomfort. No issues with it. Are you seeing any double vision? No, Just look straight ahead for me. Okay, very good. And I do just want to test your nerves. I want to test the patency in your nostrils to make sure that we're not having any issues with occlusion. Sometimes snoring can be due to a deviated septum, a broken nose that you're not aware of. Okay. Let's go ahead and check either side, okay? Sure. Take a deep breath for me. Okay, other side. Okay, did you feel you had any trouble with that? I'm not no. really sensing any issues with occlusion, maybe a little bit on this side versus the other, but overall you okay. were able to breathe in pretty normally, okay? Right. No issues. Okay, very good. So let's talk a little bit about ideal sleep temperature. You said that you prefer it to be cold, which is actually good. I know some people like to kind of bundle up and stay warm as they sleep, but ideally you'd be sleeping in a room that's anywhere from 62 to 65 degrees, which is on the colder side, okay? So if you sleep with an air conditioner, you might want to set it to 64 an hour or so before you go to bed so that the room has a chance to cool down. Okay. You also have a better chance of sleeping throughout the night if you can feel air on you directly. Okay. So if you have to put a fan in the room so that you feel that direct airflow, right. that can make a significant difference in your sleep, okay? Okay. And then obviously, as little light in the room as possible, mm -hmm. If you can invest in blackout curtains, even lights as simple as like an alarm clock or the lights on your fan, all of that can affect your sleep, especially if it's blue light. Okay. Oh, okay. So if you want you some people cover it with tape, right? You know, whatever you have to do to make it work. Right. If you can sleep with an eye mask, that okay. can make a difference. Okay, and as far as noise. Obviously, you want to eliminate as much outside noise as possible. I do recommend trying to sleep with either white or brown noise. There's also pink noise. You can try different ones out and see what you feel works best for you. I tend to prefer the white noise. So if you have a sound machine in your room or you can play it on your phone. Okay. So that usually makes a pretty big difference in not so much falling asleep, but helping you stay asleep throughout the night. Okay. So that's definitely something we want to try for you. And lastly, obviously, we don't want you drinking any caffeine before you go to bed. Right. Four to five hours before you go to bed, you want to cut out the caffeine. Okay. And I assume you have a smartphone? Yes. So a lot of smartphones nowadays have a setting where you can turn off or turn down blue light. Right. I have mine to automatically change at 8 p.m. So every night my phone does it for me. It's not something that I have to remember to think about or set an alarm for. You can set it to be done automatically every day. Okay. About eight or nine o'clock, set it to night mode so okay. that even as you're winding down and you're still in your awake period, mm -hmm. your mind is kind of right. subconsciously saying, okay, we're getting ready for sleep, no more blue light. And then obviously as you move more towards going to sleep, you said you go to sleep at 1 a.m. So maybe at 11, you really want to start cutting out any TV or screen time, okay? okay. So let's go ahead and move forward with the exam. We're going to be doing a brain scan. Okay. And I'm gonna start by having you lay down. So I'll give you a second to lay down. I'll come back in and we'll get started, okay? All right. Okay. All right, James, it looks like you're all settled in. Are you comfortable? Yes, I am. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started with the exam to start off. I've lit a couple candles. We have a peppermint candle going as well as a lavender. Okay. And these are just gonna kinda help start with that nighttime routine. This is what I was talking about when I told you that we wanted to trick your brain a little bit into knowing that it's time to settle down. Right. We're relaxing. So the smell association will kind of help you get into that settled mood, okay? I'm going to start by spraying a little bit of peppermint spray. I read that you do not have any allergies, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So 
I would highly recommend investing in a peppermint spray. I'm also going to put a little bit of peppermint essential oil on your temples. And again, the smell association will really help your brain better understand when it's time to settle down. There are also essential oil options. So there's peppermint and lavender essential oils that you could put into a diffuser. It will also help moisten the air as you sleep, which will prevent some of the dry mouth that you were talking about, okay? Very good. So I do want to test out a couple different pillow options, and this is going to help us better see what fits your anatomy. It is part of the examination. We'll send you home with the pillow that you're best suited for. So I'm going to have you raise your head for me. Mm -hmm. And this is our U pillow. Oh, okay. So it is a little maybe different than what you're used to at home and that it comes up on the sides. This is for our back and side sleepers, okay? okay? So if you sleep on your back, it can help cradle your neck so that you're not hunching over in your sleep. Right. And if you roll onto your side, it kind of helps cushion your neck and your shoulder so that you're not crunching your shoulder up into your face, okay? So how does that feel? That's really good. Okay. So I do like the way that one looks. Let me take it out for just a second. I want to just see. I don't think I'm going to like this one as much just looking at it based on the way the back of your head lays, but we can go ahead and try it. This is more of an orthopedic pillow. How do you feel? Does that feel comfortable? It's comfortable, but the first one was not as much as the other one. Okay. And I have it on the smaller side, so let me flip it over. Does this make any difference, or do you still prefer the other one? It feels about the same. About the same? Yeah. So you like the other one better? Yes, I do. Okay. Let's go ahead and bring that one back in. I agree, this one looks with better with your posture overall. Yeah. That's okay. Better. Very good. So I'll have you keep that there. I'm also going to incorporate this wedge pillow. This is a triangular pillow. I know it looks rather large. If you like this and we see that it does help with your sleep, we can also send you home with this one. Essentially what it does is elevate your legs so that we increase the blood circulation, okay? Okay. So go ahead and lift your legs for me. Okay. How does that feel? Actually not bad. Pretty comfortable? Yes. Alright James, let's go ahead and move on to our brain scan. I'm going to be testing the brain waves in your head. Okay. Be placing a couple different sets of probes on you. Okay. They'll go on your face and on your arms. Alright. Essentially this is going to help us test your brain activity as you move through sleep cycles. I'll be using a couple of reflex and sensation tools to test on you as you move through those cycles and basically this is just going to help us to interpret how well your body is functioning throughout the different sleep cycles, okay? So I'm going to start by placing these probes on your face. They're a little sticky, but it's not painful. Placing one on your temple. If at any point you need to reposition for comfort, please just let me know. Okay. Now we're adding the cables in as you fall asleep. Turn your arm over and look at this in your post point. These will test your heart rate as well as your different functions as you sleep. Just placing these 
last two pearls. All of the probes have been placed. I'm going to get started with the brain scan. As I said, as you fall asleep and move through your sleep cycles, we'll be testing sensation and reflexes to see how well you're doing. When you wake up, we'll go over your results and we'll talk about what we can do to help cure your sleep troubles naturally, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, rest well and if you need anything, we'll be right here, okay? Okay. 